the breast is removed. And what remains, you find that uh, 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 after the, the surgery, the breast has been removed, some lymph nodes have been removed, you find now you get this complication of your arms get swollen, yeah? Or if for prostate cancer or cervical cancer, you have this swelling on your legs. Or you've seen people have uh, swelling like elephantiasis, yeah, on the legs. So we manage that. How do we manage it? Mostly the condition is being managed conservatively. What do we do as physiotherapists to assist you in that? We do manual lymph drainage. It's a, a, a type of massage, a technique, yeah, that we do to, to actually rechannel the fluid back into the circulatory system and reduce the swelling either on your arm or on your leg. So we do that kind of massage. It's not like any other massage. Yeah, this is a, a, a very technical massage where we've gone through training for us to be able to do this. So it's massage, then there's a pumping machine that we put to help aid in circulation. Then we do a manual bandaging, yeah? So serial bandaging with several bandages to maintain the pressure and reduce the fluid. Then after that, we give you a stocking, yeah? Or an arm sleeve to maintain that size that we have gotten after reducing the swelling. Then after that, we teach you exercises and home care. So this is the only center that we offer lymphedema management. Then we have vestibular rehab, whereby uh, you just wake up one morning and you, you suddenly you just come out of the bed and you feel dizzy. You feel like the, the, the furniture, the house is going round and round and round. Yeah, so this is a type of a condition where we have uh, techniques of some exercises that we do to you to help reduce that uh, effect. W what causes that? Sometimes we have crystals in the ear that they dislodge either due to a dental procedure or you have an ear infection or sometimes just for positioning properly, uh, you go for a haircut or a salon and being in that position for some time causes that kind of condition. So you will go get medications and all that and it don't help much unless you go through the vestibular rehab. Then uh, we have comprehensive neuro rehab. This is the only center whereby you get a condition like a stroke, yeah, and you're able to be managed by all three specialties, the physiotherapist, occupational therapist, and the speech therapist. And we don't just do massage, because many people they just stay at home, call a physio, can't do massage. Actually, for stroke, you don't really need massage, because the problem is not on your arm or your, your leg that is not, uh, is not working. It's actually in the brain where we have the clot or we have a bleed in the brain that has caused that stroke. So what do we do? We do neuro rehabilitation. It's like, you know, like taking you back from, from growth to, I mean, from a, growing from a small baby to an adult. You know, the same uh, principle that we use of crawling, yeah, holding on to furniture and start taking baby steps and falling down Yeah, so we use the same, same function because what is lost is in the brain. It's not in, in the hand or in the leg. So we try to those functions. So the, uh, when you are in admission, then and we continue with the therapy. Then you have aquatic therapy, which is actually the only, this is actually uh, exercises in the pool. The pool is heated. It's not so deep, it's just uh, four feet. Yeah, whereby we, both adults and pediatrics can go in. We have different kinds of floaters that help you float. People, you go in with the therapist, and you're being positioned depending with your condition. So what does the pool do? The water is heated in the pool, number one. So it, it relaxes your muscles, 
it's, it improves circulation. You're able to stretch more in the pool without feeling much pain. Then the water provides buoyancy. Yeah, it makes your body lighter, okay? So once you feel your body is lighter, you're able to do a lot of activities like strengthening, you can do cardio exercises, range of motion exercises. So you find the outcome is far much better in the pool rather than in the dry land. So when, when we are doing assessment for you, we are able to determine what kind of treatment options that you require and advise you accordingly. Then it's for you now to make that decision to go ahead with this and leave this. It's like taking a paradol and leave an ephemal, you know, but they're the same thing, yeah. Then um, we have telepractice. Uh, mostly we, we've managed to do this with our speech therapy. We are able to connect with patients who are not able to come to the facility. So we can do the sessions uh, on Zoom, yeah, or on WhatsApp or whatever it is the patient is comfortable with. And you connect one-on-one -on -one with the therapist. Then we have group therapy. Uh, this for like your mass classes or speech therapy, group therapy, yeah, con uh, with kids that have the same condition, engaging the parents and do a group therapy for them. So you find the outcome is far much better because you feel like you're being motivated, you're with the same person or with, with another person who has the same condition as you, so you're able to relate and progress on well. Okay, so this is our uh, cardiac uh, rehab gym, whereby we have the, the, the telemetry equipment. You see the patient is connected to the blood pressure monitor, to the ECG, and we're able to check your heart rate and, and your oxygen saturation as you exercise. So we control this from the monitor here on the computer. We put resistance and we see how much you can perform. Then we have our neuro rehab gym. This is a patient taking a, a, a neuro rehabilitation with the therapist. The patient is doing standing on parallel, I mean, on wall bars. Yeah, this is gait training. Yeah, still on a neuro rehab. Yeah, this is activity based. So the patient, rather than pulling the patient into standing, we have like a, a, a tilt bed that helps the patient to to stand and be able to use the upper limbs to do activities. So coordination, strength, yeah, she's able to do all that. Then this is our aqua therapy pool. And this is how we float the patient depending with uh, the condition of the patient and what we are targeting at. Okay, for inpatients, we do quite a lot uh, for our inpatients for all the wards. We go to medical wards, surgical wards, we go to ICU, yeah, we go to CCU. So what do we do actually for these patients, like a patient in ICU? You find the patient is intubated, but what is the role of a physiotherapist there? I'm sure you question, you're seeing it in the bill being charged, but you don't really understand why do we charge physiotherapy in an ICU patient? And most of us believe like ICU is, just, I mean, physiotherapy is just about exercise. Yeah, your body needs to move, even though you, you are sedated, you are on a bench. So what we basically do, like a patient in ICU, you go in, we clear the chest so that the oxygen can pass through well into your lungs and reduce the number of stay in the ICU. So we clear your chest to ensure you have proper lung expansion. We do joint range of motion because you are sedated, you are not able to do any exercise of the upper and lower limbs, the position, uh, we, we give uh, stockings and as well we manage the edema. We find that if you're just lying in bed, your limbs swell, especially your legs. So we take care of that. And once you're out, out of the machine, still in night and sitting back to bed, standing at the side of bed, as we monitor 
how your body is responding to all those activities. So there's quite a lot that we do in, in, in the world. Yeah, for uh, surgical cases, immediately from theater, like you can a total knee reflection, joint stiffness, yeah. in your Like if you have a stroke, then what else? Is your life gone or what do we do? Yeah. So you look at what small activities can you do that uh, you require on a daily basis, you know, like feeding yourself. So how do we change it? You know, like make it easy for you to be able to feed yourself. If no one is around, how do you assist yourself? You know, dressing yourself, brushing, combing, all that, yeah? Work, you've been the, 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 the breadwinner in the family, yeah? You've been a carpenter. You're not able to move your right hand now. Can we train you to move your left hand? So that we're teaching you carpentry, but to use the alternative sign as we recover, the side that has been affected. Then we have leisure in play, yeah? We have like uh, those who are depressed and you know, uh, who have been affected with substance abuse and all that. The occupational therapists include that to, to make the therapy session more entertaining. You know, so even for kids, if the kids will just go there serious and just exercising without inducing play in, in form of therapy, then it's not exciting. Then rest and sleep, uh, these like uh, energy conserving techniques and all that. Yeah, so these are some of the things that we do, uh, especially in the world. Yeah, so we have developmental training or motor simulation, uh, those uh, activities of daily living, assistive devices and, and environmental modifications. Yeah, so for neurological cases, we have functional mobility assessment, uh, the energy conserving techniques, we have splinting, sensory education, oral motor stimulation and feeding skills. So for orthopedics and hand therapy, you have like, uh, you can see the board here trying to do fine movement. These are some of the splinting. Uh, that we do, this is a kid that is not able to stand because of the weakness of the lower limb. So we make splints to help them uh, able to stand and bear weight on the legs. And, it's, and actually this helps to strengthen the muscles. You see this, um, this other kid here up here had some protrusion on, on the head. So we had to make a splint to try and compress it so that it can go back. Yeah, this is a standing aid, yeah, and this is a posture correction aid. These are some of the other splints for deformity correction, like the club foot and all that. Genuvarus is in matege, yeah, we, we can correct that. Then we have sensory integration, whereby we have the tactile, that is touch, vestibular, proprioceptive, visual, our olfactory, uh, that's the smell and gustatory. Yeah, this is for orthopedics. This, uh, like the first one here, up here, the lady had a nerve injury and was not able to move the hand up. So the hand was just like this. So we had to make a splint and re-educate that uh, to gain that function moving upwards. This is the stimulation. Just to make the nerve, we had an, uh, an injury here. Yeah, and this correction was done by surgery. So this stimulation now helps to be able to do the flexion. Yeah, this for the elbow, this patient had a burn. So we had stiffness on the elbow, so it was corrected and we had to put a splint at the front to be able to correct it and, and, and remain in uh, in, in straight position. So all this we train, you see like 
fine movements like writing, uh, squeezing the ball. So you're able to grasp, you're able to hold, yeah. So you see like uh, uh, shoelacing. So we have a board that helps you with that so that you're able to do these small, small activities for yourself, yeah. So this strengthening uh, uh, of the upper limb, you're trying, this limb is weak, this lady had a stroke. So you're trying to put weight on that hand so that you're able to, to gain strength, activate muscles, activate the nerves so that they can function. Yeah, so this is feeding, like modifying the, the spoon so that you're able to hold it. The spoon, you, you hold with two fingers, but now you hold it with the whole hand because you don't have much strength on, on the fingers. So you're holding it with whole hand and try to feed. So those are ADLs training. Then how to uh, as in, uh, put on your shoes, yeah, this hand is affected, so we are using the other one to assist. And put your leg up, you, you take care of your posture, at the same time you're able to do the activity. So this is dressing, so you start with the affected side before you move to the side that is not affected, yeah. So mental health, this is activity oriented, whereby you do things that excite you so that you can take away the the stress or the depression that is affecting you. Okay, so we can go through speech and language therapy. And actually speech involves the, the speech, the language, the communication, the auditory rehabilitation and swallowing. Auditory, it's about hearing. When like so many kids uh, go through like cochlear implant, and probably when they were born, let's say not hearing, by the age of three, they go through surgery. Now they are able to hear, but these kids have not been communicating, they have not been hearing anything. So how do they start to communicate? So they come to us for speech therapy. They're being assessed and being taken through the speech therapy. So it's about the speech, how to pronounce words, yeah? And for them learning words, and how to use the words effectively, yeah? How to calm down, listen, use even other alternative uh, uh, form of language, you know, like reading the lips, you know, the sign language, yeah, using gadgets like the phones, the tabs, so that they can communicate effectively. So speech therapy, uh, so we, we use, how, how do we make uh, uh, sounds and, and words? It's through articulation, phonology, uh, fluency, and, and voice, yeah? So if any of this is affected, then definitely your speech will be altered. You'll not be able to, okay, you might hear, but you might not comprehend and understand exactly what this person is communicating to me. So it's all connected with all these four, the articulation, the phonology, fluency, and the voice. So uh, with speech language and therapy, they look at cognition, yeah? You recognize the words, the sounds, the pictures, you know, like they use the flashcards, they, they show you like, this is an apple. So can you recognize this? They use the, the pra pragmatic and semantic. So what is pragmatic language? It's the use of appropriate communication in social situation, like knowing what to say, how to say it, and when to say it. It, it involves the, the, the three major skills, whereby we use different uh, language for different purposes. Like you say, when you greet, you say, hello, yeah, how are you? When you want to inform, you say something like, I'm leaving, I'm doing this, I want to do, you are informing, okay? Then demand, you know, like you tell a kid, pick up the toy, yeah, pick up this, close the door, yeah. So that's a form of pragmatic, you know, form of uh, communication. Then changing the language, like how, how do you how do you talk to a teacher, or you as an adult, the way you talk to a small kid, 
is not the same way you talk to an old age person. Yeah, so learning those techniques of changing the, 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 the language so that it can suit that a particular situation or the person you are talking to. Yeah, then following the rules of conversation, like taking turns while talking. So when I say like this kid is hyperactive, when you talk, the kid is talking. So I'm saying when you go through speech therapy, the kid, we teach the kid how to <coughs> listen fast, understand what is being told, then respond back if you need to respond back. So like take, uh, taking turns while talking, I talk, you listen, and when you talk, I listen. Yeah, then saying one thing, like if, if you are talking about food, they should not bring in play, you know, causes distraction, bring in other issue. So to learn how to concentrate on one issue. Yeah, then we have expression, you know, how do they express themselves? They should be able to express themselves. They're being taught how to express themselves. Like I'm not feeling well. Hungry, yeah. Then comprehension, yeah. Am I too fast? <laughs> oh, <yeah>, okay. <laughs> okay. So in in, in mm. language mm. therapy, we have different categories that we look at conditions that affect each and every category. So like speech, we have dysphoria, which is difficulty in talking, you're not able to talk. Yeah, stuttering, yeah, we have clattering, uh, <clears throat> or you don't have speech at all, you, it's been affected probably, you had other conditions that affected your speech from the brain, and we are able to uh, retrain you and, and able to make you be able to, to, to gain back your speech. The language, we have things like developmental disabilities, difficulty in communication. We have autistic kids who find it hard to learn or to understand reading and writing, or you've had an accident, you've got a brain injury, and now you're not able to communicate. Yeah, so that is part of the language. Then we have swallowing. We have people who have been, let's say, intubated for long and uh, they went through surgery, so uh, they've been put the tubes from the throat here. After that, they're not able to communicate properly or they're not able to feed. So speech therapy also helps with that. It's not just about communicating, but they do stimulation, yeah, to help you be able to swallow. And they recommend what kind of foods that you can start from the beginning until your muscles uh, become strong and you're able to eat back your ugali or your matoma or whatever it is. So you start with light, light fluids like water, then porridge, the fitness keeps on changing, yogurt and something like that. And as we go along, you develop your uh, muscle strength and you're able to swallow. So we look at uh, voice. Yeah, uh, how to control your breathing, like uh, shortness of breath. Yeah, how to, to preserve and control your vocals. Let's say for, for people who sing, you find that they, they, they really get affected or people who keep on shouting and shouting. You affect your vocal cords. So you come to a speech therapist and he or she helps you to, to, to con have control over that and be able to, to strengthen and, and be able to sing again or be able to talk in a loud voice if that has been affected. Then auditory, we're looking at the, the, the hearing aid, the cochlea implant, yeah. And others we have like laryngectomy, uh, tracheostomy. These are surgeries that are done on your throat uh, due to some diseases or throat cancers and all that, yeah. And they, they assess and see, can you gain that back or would you need an alternative uh, way of communication? They say sign language or by use of cards and all that, or uh, gesture, I mean, uh, facial expression, uh, lip reading, all that. So, uh, 
probably I can take in any questions if you have any. Maybe you can continue and then we ask her Okay. So now we are we we are at the end of our um, presentation. Are there any questions on the on the message, Janet? No, there are no questions on the chat box. Uh, Maybe we can play a small video as they prepare to ask questions. You can post your questions on the chat box. Uh, maybe play a short video as we and give you time to to write your questions so that Fatma can answer them. I'm not able to play the video for one reason or another, but uh, you can ask your questions meanwhile. Harrison, maybe you can coordinate on your side. Yes, Janet. Um, um... Maybe I, I know I know this. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a very wonderful presentation. However, I, I know it has it's a, it has a bit of complex 